Hey again, guys. So now it's Sunday night, and you know what I like to do on Sunday nights? I like to look at some baseball cards. I have here, and this is for you, Dave, a rare set. Uh, I just found out about these cards about five years ago, and in all the time of looking for them, I've only seen them a handful of times, and uh, that's just a few of the cards. I had an opportunity to, find, uh, to uh, uh, obtain a, a nice, clean, complete set at one time, and I was dicking around with price and uh, ended up not getting them. So uh, somebody out here who's watching, you might have been the one to grab those. They were a, a good deal uh, in retrospect. But at any rate, uh, you guys might be familiar with the 1969 Jack in the Box cards, and there are uh, similar cards that weren't Jack in the Box, uh, and they are Andersons, 1969 Andersons. And I know they have them for the, uh, the A's. Well, in 1970, uh, they made them for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And they're routinely mislabeled as, as Jack in the Box. The Jack in the Box cards have advertising for Jack in the Box. Not to mention, I don't think there's ever been a Jack in the Box in Pittsburgh. Uh, so they're 1970 Andersons. And uh, I have here a near complete set. I need the Willie Stargell and the Doc Ellis. Uh, there is no Clemente in this set, unfortunately. But uh, anyway, here we go. They're blank backs. Here's the Manny Sanguian. Here's the Al Oliver. Here is a signed uh, Dave Justy, a signed Gene Alley, and this is one of the nicer looking cards in the set, I think. Non-signed Gene Alley. Uh, Freddie Potek, long time staple at shortstop for the Kansas City Royals. Now, what didn't, uh, man, I need to look this up. Didn't he, ha he had very few home runs, but didn't he have like two in one game or three in one game or something? I think almost every home run he hit was in the same game. Small little, small little smooth, sh smooth fielding shortstop. Not that anybody cares about defense anymore, apparently. Bob Robertson. We have Jose Pagan. And Dave May. These sideways cards look pretty cool in this set. So earlier today, I did uh, I did a little rant on Sports Collectors Digest and how it's really gotten away from uh, what it's always been. And I got a lot of feedback. I want to thank you for your feedback. Uh, seems like a lot of people have noticed the same thing that I've noticed, that it has just turned into a bunch of advertising for auctions. And essentially just uh, reporting on auction prices. And uh, it's, it's such a shame, you know, after seeing some comments and, and, and thinking further, you know, it's just lazy. It's just lazy uh, to regurgitate auction prices. I mean, we all can go see those. We, we know what those prices are before that magazine even hits. It comes out every two weeks. You know, when I got really into stocks, I, I stopped my Wall Street Journal subscription. Because every morning I would read about the same stuff I heard about on CNBC the day before. And I already knew the stock prices. So what am I getting the newspaper for? So if all you're going to do is auction prices, you have to do it uh, faster than every two weeks. Because that's already old news. And it's just lazy to just put auction prices in your magazine. I don't know. I'm real disappointed because it's always been my absolute favorite magazine. I've been featured in it. I've been getting it for years. Bob Lemke, who used to be in charge of that uh, back in the day, I used to interact with him and he would reach out to me, interview me for artic articles. I contributed a set to him one time, help, check, help him checklist it. And so uh, I've always had a, a close affiliation uh, with that publication and of course the Sports Collector's uh, uh, standard catalog of, of uh, baseball cards too. That's like my favorite publication. So it's, it's kind of sad to see what it became, but it's just like as soon as the new editor came, it was overnight. It was just overnight. The whole vibe changed. And uh, there's really nothing to read in it anymore. 
but this whole industry changes. Now, change is inevitable. You know, if you're around my age, you probably find yourself not really understanding much of anything anymore. You know, I, I don't really understand. That, like the sitcoms are just junk to me. There's a laugh track after every sentence. I find myself gravitating back to the old shows and, uh, you know, longing for the old days when things seem to make a little bit more sense. And uh, so I guess this is just one more thing I'm going to lose out on or I'm going to outgrow. Um, and it, it's it's kind of sad, you know, it, it depresses me all the things I have outgrown. I have subscribed to GQ magazine since I was in the 10th grade back in 1984 all these years. And now, I mean, that's no longer a, a, a magazine for straight men. It's it's all guys with purses and makeups and, and, and female clothing and skirts. And so uh, another long time subscription that I have loved all my life. And uh, I just no longer can relate to it. It's not for me. And uh, the more, more and more of everything that is happening just seems like it's not for me anymore and it, it's sad i don't i don't know if um if my parents generation has gone through this as drastically as us but it's like you wake up one day and everything has changed and uh so sports collectors digest is just i guess the next thing to to change but um i do love collecting and I know, you know, my subscribers, all of you seem to love collecting. Um, and it's not about the money. And it's not about uh, seeing, uh, you know, what the next price of the LeBron rookie is. Is it going to go for higher or the Mike Trout? Well, I just saw a, uh, you know, Joe Burrow lost the Super Bowl and his rookie card just went for like $62,000. It's just a new world. And... Uh, Times change. Uh, I guess the only choice we really have is to accept them. But, you know, my, my father, he only listened to his old music from when he was growing up. And I always say when I get older, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to modern music. I'm going to blend in. I'm going to, you know, I want to be part of uh, what the new, um, new culture is. Right. And I do. I do listen to new music and, uh, you know, I some some new things, but most of it is just passed me by. And uh, anyway, um, that's kind of where my rant was coming from. I just get frustrated sometimes watching everything I love change. I mean, it's bad enough. You know, your your body changes. You know, I got to take extra days off at the gym. I don't recover as quickly. I don't you know, lose weight as quickly. Uh, when I look in the mirror, I see, uh, you know, new wrinkles and stuff. So it's already, uh, it's already tough to uh, age. And man, if you're younger, believe me, it goes by like that. I still feel like I'm in high school. I still feel like a little kid with my baseball cards. But uh, then you look in the mirror or you wake up in the morning with some stiff legs and you realize you're not. Uh, so that's kind of where I, I've been uh, coming from. Uh, but it's all good. I got nothing f nothing but love for everyone and uh, nothing but love for this hobby. And cards and all cards and not just cards that sell for 30000 not just cards that sell for 400000 not just cards that sell for $6 million. Although I would love to have that T206 Wagner. But uh, there's more to the hobby than just seeing what that sells for and the 52 tops mantle sells for and the LeBron rookie sells for and the, the Mike Trout sells for. I, I, I'm kind of convinced it's a bunch of rich people just flipping these things to make headlines so that it sells for more the next time. I don't know. A bunch of friends get together, sell them to each other. It is so hard to believe that there's this many people paying this much money for cards and they're all collectors. I mean, that's just not the way it is, right? Uh, you're drawn to these things because you think you can make money. If you look at any of the uh, FANG stocks over the last three months, four months, you know, many of them are down 50%. And you don't hear people talking about them much anymore. And uh, apparently people aren't buying them like they were before, right? Uh, you could buy those things, you could be a total moron. And all you have to do is make that decision. And that's how the card hobby's been. 
But as we see with those stocks coming down 50%, I mean, go look, to, go take a look at some of these uh, NASDAQ stocks. Just pummeled. Just pu most of them. Just pummeled. And uh, that's maybe what we need in the hobby to get back to normalcy. You know, I'm all in favor of the hobby going up. I'm all in favor of card prices going up. You know, but it's healthy to go up a little at a time. It's not healthy to go like this and like this and like this and like this. And uh, it's not fun. It's certainly not fun if you're a collector. It's certainly not fun if you're racking up your credit card um, to buy these things, knowing that you could flip them and then one day you can't flip them. You know, I remember during the uh, housing boom, uh, nobody could go wrong. Everybody's flipping homes, flipping homes, flipping homes, going higher, higher. And boom, the bottom fell out. They all went bankrupt and uh, they got caught at the top. It's like the bank robber that robs four banks and gets away with it. But that fifth one, he goes to prison for the rest of his life. You know, uh, eventually you get caught when you're greedy and, and not paying attention and not careful. And that's throughout history, throughout history. The Roaring Twenties didn't end too well. The dot-com boom didn't end too too well. The housing boom didn't end too well. We're probably in another one now. So, uh, you know, just be careful out there. I've been through a, <laughs> I've been through a, a lot of different uh, booms and busts in my time, and I I have been warning for a while. So, uh, anyway, I'm a little extra talkative. That's what's on my mind. A uh, little reminiscent. I'm feeling nostalgic for my old Collector's Digest, Sports Collector's Digest. And man, I, I really missed the newspaper style one. That was fantastic. And the tough stuff. I know a lot of you read the tough stuff. I used to, man, I used to read that with my coffee and see what the hot cards were of the time and go through there and see what the new, the new releases were. And that's what it's all about for us collectors. So, hey, as always... Thanks for listening and thanks for watching.